Ahmad, um, uh, do you think I would be a good EA at a bourbon distillery? Obviously. Why? Because you love bourbon. I do love bourbon. Today. Well, I feel like now that I'm in Austin, Texas, I could use a career change. So I'm thinking I'd be a big asset to a bourbon distillery. Do you think you're up for teaching me how to be an EA at a distillery today? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Do I get to drink bourbon all day? <laughs> oh, no. Funny enough, you know, it, I have, I'm surrounded by it at our office because I also manage, so every time we do a release, we take the first 12 bottles and we put them in to this place in the office called the museum. Okay. So we have the first edition of everything we've ever made. And so like, I'm kind of surrounded by bourbon every day, but we never really drink it. Oh. Isn't that funny? Yeah. We do cool. encourage happy hours every once in a while though. Do you think you could utilize my skills as a, a taster? Is that part of being an EA? Because I feel like I could taste a lot of bourbon. So funny, funny story with that. It seems like I always have an intuition for coming out on the day that they're dumping barrels. <laughs> and and they, I mean, wouldn't you know it? They always giggle when I drive up. <laughs> like, how did you know? And, I'm, and I always go out there and grab a taste of whatever they're dumping. And it's like my favorite. Y'all with this lady? You're interviewing me. I don't know why I still, but they think I'm important. All right, cool. Whether well, that's a good interview or not, I don't know. <laughs> My badge says the only hope. You know, I started working for Garrison Brothers 12 years ago, and, um, and it was funny how that all started because my boss, his assistant, left, and he begged me to take over. And I had already been working for his wife as her assistant to her mother. Oh, wow. So I took on Dan Garrison as well. And um, it's not an easy question because I do so many different things. I probably have done every job in this company except for actually make the bourbon. I was full-time EA for um, his mother-in-law. But before that, interesting enough, I was living in Houston and I was a pharmacy tech for 15 years. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so like I totally did a switch. to the ranch first of all is like my favorite because I'm behind a desk all day and so when I get to come out here it's kind of we call it like a distillery run so I'm hitting all the departments so uh, first I take care of Dan and whatever he needs and then I'll go to a hospitality and see what they need dropped off or um, for example like our old 300 um, program I'm dropping off barrel heads to them. Then I'll head up top to the still house and see what our master distiller needs or pick up mail. I mean, it's different every day. So um, I was taking care of our compliance. So every time we entered a new state, I would take care of the licensing for that. Um, a couple of our states, 
need you know monthly tax returns done. Um, I do a monthly tax for the federal government and then one for Texas estate because Texas is, we got to do an extra step. And then um, you know like I'm our office office manager, so I'm taking care of that managing the cleaning lady and um, so. I mean, even those kinds of things are a little different every day too. If I want to be an EA in a bourbon distillery, what qualities do you think I need to have? Um, a lot of patience um, and be great at communication. Don't laugh. <laughs> it's true. Um, and have a sense of humor. That's a major one. I can do that. Yeah. Big, big time sense of humor. And, um, you know, you gotta let a lot of stuff go. You know, can't can't be. Um, don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the number one rule of being an EA everywhere: don't take it personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can be hard. You've got to have a thick skin. Yeah, yeah. thick skin. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna need you to stop drinking the bourbon. Can you send us emails for me? Yeah, emails. Sending emails. Sending me emails. I'm gonna really need you to stop drinking the bourbon. Someone asked me to do some quality control, I think it was, like taste testing, because we don't want to send bad bourbon out. You know, um, I had such a heart for working in pharmacy and you know, it, it really kind of like wears down on you, the, the people that you're helping and serving. Um, but when you switch over to bourbon or liquor, everyone's a lot happier when <laughs> you're <laughs> in every sense of the world. And you know, what I found out about bourbon is, um, even though we have competitors like other distilleries, we all work as a family. Right. So if, you know, I'll, t you know, help out another distillery, Hey, this opportunity is up. We can't take it. Do you guys want it? And that's a really cool thing. You know, you just, you feel a sense of community. Will you go grab those coffees for me? Yeah, of course. I'd love to. Stop drinking the bourbon. <laughs> no, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Um, so recently, uh, we were talking about compliance. I have um, let go of that and I've taken on our nonprofit arm called Good Bourbon for a Good Cause. So I'm now on that side too. How do you manage your time? Well, funny enough, I'm kind of old school. I'm learning to be better. I'm mainly focused on my calendar. So that's kind of like my life because that's where I kind of keep my boss in track too. So, I mean, I'm constantly on my cell phone. But aside from that, we use a, a tool called Asana. And then you can like build out all of your projects. And then I have it right there on my phone. You know, if something pops up that I'm immediately notified. I don't want to waste it. I feel you. One thing I will never say is it's not my job. Mm -hmm. um, I will always do the job and I will never say I cannot do that. Um, I will always find a way or figure it out and use every last resource to figure out whatever the problem is. Telling your boss like I got it and then owning that and figuring it out, I think it's like the best thing. I don't think I have ever told my boss no, but twice in 12 years, I told him, do not give me another project. And he left. What's a good 10 a.m. bourbon cocktail? Old fashioned. An old fashioned? It's not day drinking if you don't start in the morning, right? Obviously. Let's have an old fashioned. Right. Thank you. I'll tell you, for example, um, before, before I was dance assistant, um, w I had to wear a dress and tights and heels every day to work. Okay. And when my boss walked in the door before he actually became my boss, he came in in shorts, kicked off his flip flops, started walking around. And we were like, we're wearing jeans from now and like, forget about it, you know? And that's just who he is. And I love that. Uh, you know, he was there when my first daughter was born. He was at the hospital. I'm like, oh, I don't, God. I don't know any boss that does that. So that, yeah. that kind of really like established our relationship. Like, you know, 
it's just, it's just really good. You know, I couldn't imagine working for a better company.